to Married at First Sight season 15 and this was decision day y'all and this video is going to be uh, for Nate and Stasha I'm doing separate videos on all the couples so be sure before we get started to please like subscribe and comment on this video because I definitely want to hear what y'all have to say because there were some twists and turns on this one and like I've been saying on all my other videos I got a lot of stuff wrong this season a lot of stuff wrong um, but I guess at least I got this one right I did predict that there were gonna be a two yeses by these two but let me tell you um Sasha had me scared there for a minute I didn't know what she was gonna say when she started uh, uh, reading Nate the way she was reading Nate I was like don't tell me this girl about to say no uh, please don't tell me this girl's about to say no so I'm happy to see that the two of them are said yes to each other. But it, it shows some cracks, y'all. They got some work to do. And I really hope uh, that they can uh, do the work after this yes. They might need some counseling because I do think they've got some issues to work through. Um, and hopefully they can work through them. But I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for these two. But I was happy to hear them say yes on decision day. At least I was cheering for one of the couples. It's crazy how they marriage just really took a turn for the worse. You know, like the last two weeks of the whole uh, um, season or whatever else. Because they was going strong and going strong. And like um, Stasha said, she didn't expect to be here on decision day. Because remember, Stasha was another one of those people with those uh, decision day ultimatums. Talking about if you don't love me and tell me you love me uh, by the end of decision day, I'm, I'm not going to say yes to you. So we never did hear Nate tell her he loved her. Um, I do think that Nate loves her, and but he never said the words. But it looks like Stasha said, you know what? I'm going to give it more time uh, to see if we can grow in love. And, and hopefully they will. And she gave it a little bit more time and she didn't stick to her guns and uh, do and pull a Kristen because see Kristen stuff back, uh, backfired on her. She gave a Mitch the same ultimatum that unless you tell me you love me, um, I'm going to say no. And what Mitch said was, OK, well, I guess I ain't going to uh, we're not going to say Mary because you're not going to bully me into saying um, yes on decision day. And let me tell you, Stasha didn't do that to Nate. Uh, she didn't. Uh, and Nate didn't call. She didn't call Nate's bluff and he didn't call her bluff. And even though she didn't get the I love you, they decided to say yes on the decision day. So I was happy about that because I thought those ultimatums were ridiculous anyway. And Dr. Pepper finally admitted that, you know, they took these two for granted. Basically, Dr. Pepper said we neglected these two because we just thought they were so good. Finally, these experts are, try are telling the truth that they neglected these couples and they barely give them any support. I wish we could go back to the earlier seasons when the experts really gave these couples support. But nowadays, shoot, they own their own. This is some DIY, do-it-yourself do it yourself marriage. They used to get help. They used to get some instructions and help. But now, Married at First Sight is, are you on your own? I don't know. Did the budget decrease and they can't afford or more time with the experts? I don't know what it is. But they put these couples out on a boat and they let them uh, sail out into the sea all on their own, sometime without a paddle. And it's really sad to see these couples need a more support more support but here comes pastor cal again you know pointing out the flaws of nate because like i tell you pastor cal always tends to put a lot of the work on the men he really does believe the men need to shore up the relationships with i do agree i do agree that men need to be the leaders in the household but i think sometimes what pastor cal does he puts way too much work on the men and he doesn't put enough work on the women like you said he's always pointing out what justin wasn't for um what Justin wasn't doing for Alexis, but never gave Alexis any constructive criticism. And now here we are talking about uh, what, what Nate needs to do for Stasha, but now also kind of giving equal uh, counsel to both couples. I think you need to give equal counsel because both people need to improve. And I think what's, what happens to Stasha is she's real good at pointing out what Nate needs to improve on. But when it comes to her, I, I think sometimes she doesn't notice it. And I think if Pastor Cal brought it up a little bit more I think maybe she made more progress I mean he was doing a little bit of it earlier he was telling her don't be so stubborn and you know you know dogmatic in her thinking but I think that uh 
I think he should have worked with her a little bit more. Maybe she would have made a little bit more progress. But Sasha was talking about she had an immediate attraction to Nate. You know, right off the bat, you know, they had very good chemistry, very good sexual chemistry. As we know, they lit up the screen. Um, she said, but she thinks she, he lacks maturity. He lacks maturity. And I think when Sasha's talking about maturity, maybe she's talking about relationship experience. Because to be honest with you, I'm telling you, when I see the two of them sit next to each other and I see the two of them expressing themselves, I'm telling you, each time I hear Nate speak, he seems so much more mature in his thinking and his logic than Stasha. And I know Stasha has had a lot of counseling and, um, you know, therapy and stuff, but it is Nate who to me outshines Stasha in being able to express himself. Even when it's bad things, Nate is able to admit when he was insecure, he's able to admit when he overreacted. And Stasha, on the other hand, she talks about all the childhood trauma that Nate has regarding um, his mother, which I think she's correct about that. But Stasha doesn't recognize any of the childhood trauma she has around her father. <laughs> it's the craziest thing to watch for her to see Nate and how Nate's adulthood is affected by the fact that he was abandoned by his mother, which I see it too. But she doesn't see how she's been affected by her father. It's just the weirdest thing to watch. Even when Stasha keeps saying she doesn't want to be in a uh, loveless relationship, she's oversensitive to this loveless relationship. Even that is probably because of her trauma. It's like she doesn't even get that. She, but you know, the one thing I like about Nate, and even Stasha points it out, she says that he is able to come back, re-examine himself, look at himself, and uh, look at the error of his ways and admit what he did wrong. Uh, that's good, but we still don't see that from Stasha. That's the one thing that kind of concerns me about these two is that I don't hear enough from Stasha about what she needs to do differently. Um, I just still keep hearing about uh, what the flaws are and what Nate needs to do differently. And it's not that she's not accurately pointing out the things. It just seems like it's kind of one sided. So that still concerns me. So I think they're going to have to do work on that. Um, you know, after this decision day, even Pastor Cal said this is not uncommon. This is not an uncommon problem uh, that they both going to need to work on this. And even every time Sasha kept trying to say what was wrong with Nate, he kept trying to bring it back to we, we, we. <laughs> he kept saying, girl, don't be leaving yourself out this equation. Uh, we both got work to do. And the one thing he kept doing was he kept trying to say we, 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 because Sasha was saying a you, you, you. But I was happy to see that Stasha said yes. I was happy to see that she said that um, she's resilient. And even though the things that she saw these last couple of weeks were red flags to her, uh, she was willing to stick in there and stand by her man, as she said, and stick with them and see this thing out. So I feel good about that. I hope she is as hardworking and determined in this marriage as she is in her business life, because she's obviously been very successful in business. And she, that means she's probably been dedicated and a hard worker in business. And I hope that translates this over to her uh, relationship. But I think she's going to have to start admitting some things she needs to work on and not just looking at um, things that Nate needs to work on because he definitely got some childhood trauma. Uh, but so does Stasha because a lot of Stasha's not wanting to be in a loveless relationship. I think that comes from her own father and the loveless relationship she, that, her, that her mother probably had with the father. And I think that's the terminology she's repeating because I don't know where did you see this from, girl, a loveless relationship. Where did you see this before that now you're scared of it? That's what trauma is. You saw it before and now you're scared of it. So the very fact that Nate is afraid of Stasha, is she going to be a good mother? Is she going to abandon her kids? Is she going to be out partying when she got a little baby at home? Because he saw it before. Sasha, where did you see a loveless relationship? And she doesn't recognize that her just saying that is because she's just as traumatized. But uh, Nate said, you know what? When he was single, he was a quitter. But as a married man, he ain't a quitter no more. Um, good for you, Nate. Good for you. But I was happy to see that these two said uh, yes on decision day. And I was saying all season long, I need a couple of fairy tales out of this because even though we, I know we got a, a, a yes out of Lindy and Miguel and I'm going to do their video too. Um, I don't think they're going to last y'all. I think it's going to be a yes on decision day and I think it's going to fall all apart. So I still got all my eggs in the basket of Nate and Stasha because they're the, really the only ones I think can actually stay together. But that's it, y'all. Tell me what you think. Drop down in the comments and let me know what you think of, of this episode as well. Talk to you later. Bye.